All right, welcome back to WorldwideGiantGrowers.com. It's been an exciting summer, having the best season of my life. I've been growing these things since 1996 and with advanced nutrients products, and we're having some decent weather this year, not the greatest, some cool nights, but some decent weather. Uh, my best season ever. So I want to start out with the tomatoes here and show you the tomatoes. This here is a Brutus Magnum tomato. I'm guessing it's probably about a three pounder. So that's a decent tomato, nothing record breaking. Um, I did harvest on my 6.83 Bujo from France. I did harvest this one the other day. I was going to show everybody how uh, to store these tomatoes for a way off. Um, I have a minnow cooler. In this minnow cooler, styrofoam cooler, I put newspapers in the bottom, and then there's the tomato. I'll take it out and show it to you. All right, this is. A 4.12 pound tomato that I grew off at 6.83 Bujo from France and I'll be taking this to a way off maybe Hamilton Ohio and uh, you can win like a hundred dollars at one of these way offs which is kind of covers your gas to the way off it's like a four hour five hour drive from here that helps pay for the gas but if you want to store them get you a minnow cooler put some newspaper in the bottom or an airtight container, it doesn't have to be a minnow cooler, airtight container, set that down in there gently, and I put newspapers on top. Marvin Mitchell taught me this, my good friend Marvin Mitchell, who grew the 255 Mitchell watermelon back in 07. And what you do is you take this, I put a couple, two layers of bags on here, and I seal this so it's airtight, and it goes in the refrigerator. Make sure your refrigerator is not set too cold. You don't want it freezing. Put it on a regular setting. Should be about 45 degrees. And uh, this will keep three to four weeks. I've done it many times and get you to a way off. So good luck on your tomatoes. And uh, we'll see you. We're going to move along here and show some other stuff. All right, here we are at the field pumpkins. Earlier I was telling you about my field pumpkins I'm growing. I'm growing the... Uh, now, I've said this man's name wrong before. I said John McKinnon. It's McKinnon. This is the 162B McKinnon. Um, she's starting to turn orange. I did start late here. I'm hoping to have a nice field pumpkin for the uh, for the master growers title, but we'll see what happens. You know, it's a it's definitely a competition, and I, uh, I already have one over here turning orange. My uh, 131 McKinnon is already turning orange on me. So hey, it's anybody's guess at this point. I'm starting to get a lot of weeds. Right over here is my Klein squash, another Canadian name. Um, doing okay for getting started so late. If you remember, I didn't plant this plant till July. It's a nice looking true green squash. If you don't know the difference between a squash and a pumpkin, it has to be all completely green to be a true green squash. If this had like one splotch of cream or orange or something on it, it would be a pumpkin. It has to be solid green. That's the GPC ruling. They changed it back in like 06, 07, somewhere in there. I guess rumor has it that in Michigan, it's a three or four way tie right now. It's neck and neck between Bill Edwards, Marvin Mitchell, Eric Proctor, and me. And there may be a couple sleepers out there we don't know about. Who's got the biggest melon? Right now, this is about 175 pounds, I'm guessing. May go heavy, may go light. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see who's got the biggest watermelon in Michigan, grown in 52 degree nights. That's about the average night this summer was 52 degrees. So, good luck. Good luck to you all. May the best melon man win. All right, here's Dolly. Dolly two. Like I told you earlier, we're not going to say what they're taping now, but she's a big one. I tell you right now, I believe this pumpkin here will probably beat my personal best. My personal best was 1,478 pounds in 2012. And I believe this being one of my smaller pumpkins will beat that. All right. And we'll move ahead here, Mike. Come up and show them the uh, 2009 Wallace. This is uh, <laughs> 2009 Wallace. I guess you can probably just stand back there in the middle if you want. Just show me from the middle so you don't walk on that wall. Here's a. Uh, she's taping out right now. I got a fan on a couple of the stems. The stems had a couple little cracking issues, nothing serious. I can't, like I say, I can't, I'm not going to say what they're taping, but this is a big, wide, big, wide pumpkin. She's a beaut. All right, so 
just I'm definitely having my best year ever with the uh, with the advanced nutrients products. They're great products. All right, here we are with the uh, 1530 Gayweiler from Wisconsin. Chad Chad Gayweiler's pumpkin. It won last year the WWGG. Great pumpkin. <coughs> great pumpkin. This was grown outside, not in a kin cave, and uh, it's doing well. I tell you what, it's definitely bigger than its mother. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, much bigger than its mother. All right, here we are. This is the uh, 1478 Clements. This plant here grew uh, the watermelon, I mean the watermelon, the pumpkin I just took to Canfield Fair in Ohio and took first place. I was grand champion on August 26th. Um, that was a nice fair. Thank you very much, you Ohio guys, for inviting me. And this is what's left over. I let it grow, some pumpkins grow wild on this plant to finish the plant out. This is my granddaughter, Brooklyn. If you remember, Brookler the Lookler, she uh, modeled uh, my Jackson Reed pumpkin in 2012, my 1478 Clements. And she's on my website. Brookler, this is your Halloween pumpkin. Then we'll come over here and show you a couple more pumpkins. These plants, for you guys that aren't pumpkin growers, these plants have the ability to grow. You can probably grow eight or ten pumpkins on them, and they can get a lot bigger than this. Here's Jackson's Halloween pumpkin. I put his name on it. It grows and heals over. It's kind of cool. Let's each kid know they got their own pumpkin. So for that, why don't you give them just a little quick sweep of the uh, the long gourds, and uh, they're hanging there. I have an issue, the 137 Ansoms has an issue on the left. There's some kind of, they told me there's a problem in the seed genetics. Everybody's having problems with it this year. But my 114.88 Clements is over there reaching, uh, I think it's getting up there well over 90 inches. If you want, Mike, walk up there and show them. Give them a look of uh, the long gourds. The long gourds are awesome, beautiful plant. I think they're just cool, cool as the beans. Um, all right, don't step forward. This stump's two feet in front of you. All right, we're pushing probably over 90 inches there. Beautiful plants. So hopefully the we got cold nights ahead of us, so I don't know how long these are going to get. But uh, for the cool nights, they're doing pretty good. Well, here we are, back in the Kin Cave 1 with Tiny Swatsenaiga. Tiny is my favorite, of course. I've kind of favored her all along, seeing how it's my... 1317 Clement seed and uh, she did really good in Alaska. Dale Marshall won the Alaska State Fair with his 1370 Clement seed. Um, <clears throat> Joel Jarvis in St. Thomas has a beauty, a beauty growing. He actually grew the pumpkin on its blossom end pointed up and it's a nice cream pumpkin with this same shape but on its butt so you'd have like a perfectly shaped pumpkin. Ron Barker out in Washington State They've got a couple tinies going. One of my nose is over 1,200 pounds now, doing really well. It's probably bigger than that. That was the last I heard, 1,200 pounds a while back. Um, but anyways, this is going to be the seed of the year, folks, my prediction. This is going to be the seed of the year. Um, she's a beauty. If you look at this thing, oh, my God, the size of this pumpkin. An orange, if you get a big orange pumpkin, that's what you want. So... Speaking of that, we also had a lot of people ask about the white chair. I don't have it in here right now, but there's been a white chair setting in the greenhouses by each pumpkin through the whole summer. And people have been asking, what's the white chair for, Mark? Well, I'm about to reveal Bubba's secret. Shh. Bubba's secret growing tip number 88. How to motivate your pumpkin to grow. Every night this year, I read Tiny Swatchenegger, The Bedtime Story, the little kin that could. But each night I read to Tiny. Tiny, the little pumpkin asked Bubba, do you think I could be a record breaker someday, Bubba? Sure you can, Tiny, sure you can. So Bubba drenched the soil with voodoo juice, piranha, tarantula, and the pumpkin continued to grow and grow and grow. Later on, much later on, the pumpkin said, do you still think I can be a record breaker? Sure you can, Tiny Schwarzenegger. And so they drenched again, and again, and again. And at season's end, we had a record breaker. Keep on growing. Shh. Remember, keep it a secret, but go tell a friend. Bubba's Secret Garden. Oh, and by the way, Bonnie Lewis, 
you just won for sharing the video link of nine video nine you want a hat from advanced nutrients or a shirt your choice get a hold of Bubba we'll work out the details and Brian Kibler member 68 you want a hat or a shirt from advanced nutrients get a hold of me Brian we'll work out the details we'll see you all at the way offs in two weeks I'm gonna start out in Wisconsin in Cincinnati then Ohio Valley we'll see you all then